Welcome to Let's Talk TCI Real Estate, a show that is geared towards all things real estate in the Turks and Caicos Islands. I'm always excited to be in your home on a Thursday, of course, to speak about real estate. I always say I'm excited and because I am. So please like and share the page and let someone know that Let's Talk TCI Real Estate is live. Just before we get into the meat of the show today, just want to give a thank you so much to the guests from my previous episode of Let's Talk TCI Real Estate. I'm in the person of Miss Carmen Brown, better known as Rochelle. She is from Global Capital, and it was such a delight to have her on the broadcast to be able to have a conversation with her about the loan application that Global Capital offers. I'm always trying to find new and innovative ways of bringing the product of real estate to you, the listening audience, so that you will have opportunities, you will have preferences. And therefore, I believe that that show last week was just a really good opportunity for anyone who is looking to make an investment in real estate. So if you did not have an opportunity to view, please go back on my Facebook page and view that episode. Or you can also go to my YouTube channel, which is Vernika Delancey and view that episode and all of the episodes that have been aired on Let's Talk TCI Real Estate. Great. I'm sure based on that introduction, you would have already liked and shared the page and you are ready to get into the meat of the matter. And today I have on the show with me to have a conversation. This isn't his first time. (laughs) He's been here before um, in the person of Mr. Tarek Jackson. Thank you. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Welcome back. Great. <laughs> of course, we all know that he's from um, Keller Williams, Teams Keller Williams. But also today, we actually, I actually have him in a new capacity as the ambassador of the Turks and Caicos Real Estate Association. Yeah, so every year the association does have a voting process and we select an ambassador to represent our association. And I am so pleased to have him with me. And on that note, I am just going to roll right over to him and ask him to just explain to us a little bit more about his role as he introduced himself to us once again on Let's Talk TCI Real Estate. Welcome again. For sure. Thank you. Um, so as you may know, I am Torth Jackson from mm-hmm. Keller Williams. Um, I consider myself as a energetic, outgoing, um, personable realtor, um, which, you know, that makes your process that much easier. Um, on the tone of the ambassador, mm-hmm. thank you. You actually was the one who called and broke the news to me yes. that I won uh, <laughs> or I was voted yes. uh, ambassador. And it's funny that I said I won because that's what I thought, right? Like <laughs> I won, like it's an award, like mm-hmm. so forth. Um, but it's really a duty. Yes. It's really a duty, a role that comes with responsibilities. Mm-hmm. And you, I believe all agents represent the association. However, as the ambassador, you know, you kind of lead the way. Yes. So as ambassador, my initiative is going to be at the SNAP Center. Right. um, Which I was able to introduce to the association a Mm -hmm. few days ago at our monthly meeting. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm excited for that. I am looking to really provide more than just help, Mm -hmm. but, you know, show that I care, be a consistent face. Mm -hmm. Um, I kind of dubbed my project, Project Revitalize. Right. And that's because after them telling me, you know, the work needed to be done in the garden, in the yard, and I saw it, you know, um, it really needs, it really needs some love and attention, yes. TLC, exactly. Right. Um, and I'm excited to see what will happen. And of course, the end product. Mm-hmm. So. Well, I think you, you have a lot of energy. <laughs> and so I feel that it is a project that you will be able to achieve. And I'm sure that you have the backing of the Real Estate Association to help you achieve this project. Of course. So um, being a helping hand to the SNAP Center, I think is a very good idea. And I know over the past years, um, there have been many ambassadors who have um, um, led the way by you know, making a mark in the community. And I know that um, last year, even with uh, one of the initiatives we, the ambassador led in the form of Trevor Musgrove, it was actually about the mentorship program. And I think it was a successful, um, it was a successful approach that was taken. Mm -hmm. And I I know because I was a part of it and a lot of um, school students were excited to be able to get a taste and a feel of what this real estate career is all about. Correct. And I think it really left a mark within the community of the Turks and Caicos as a whole. And so anytime that 
I think we as an association can get out there. I think it's just bringing people closer to the world of real estate and reminding them where we are out there. We are there to help them and assist in any way possible. So I'm actually looking forward to be a part of your project at the SNAP Center as we do whatever it takes to be a part of what's happening in the community. Of course. Um, And I definitely agree. Trevor definitely made his mark with that mentorship program um, to the tone that Mm -hmm. the day after Mm -hmm. I was was voted um, ambassador, I got a call from an agent like, you know, when is the ambassador, when is the mentorship program starting again? Yes. So uh, I know it's well anticipated and that is going to be a part two or uh, the second initiative that I'll also be taking on as well. Right. Well, I wish you all the best Thank you. for your ambassador, ambassadorship year ahead. Thank I you. know it's not an easy task. For sure. But of course, like I said before, once you have the backing of your um, colleagues and those in the association, it's going to be a successful project. For sure. And I, I definitely know that I have that. I feel the support. Great. So I just wanted to say to all those who are listening, we've done your introduction, but really the main topic of today's session is about, is it the right time to buy? And I am so excited to have this conversation with you because you you know for yourself, this is something that um, persons, customers have asked over and over, is it the right time to buy? And I believe the question is coming from concern because every real estate transaction is a really big investment opportunity for each individual. It doesn't matter if it's $50,000 or if it's a million dollars. It is a very big investment. It is um, something that has to be um, seriously considered so that because when you get into it, it's no turning back. There are so many benefits of investing, but at the same time, you don't want to rush into anything prematurely. And so that's why it is good to be able to have a clear understanding whether it is the right time or not to buy because you want to make sure your investment comes. Correct. Right? So the subject of is it the right time to buy, I thought it was just so fitting because um, I think that this is a question, like I said, we've been asked so many times, and I think that the listening audience can get a really good understanding of where they're at and where they need to go and if it is the right time for them to buy. Of course. Right? Uh, I definitely agree. Um, That is definitely a hot topic and a Mm -hmm. question that we always get asked. Um, I always say it starts with you, right? Mm -hmm. It has to work for you. Yes. The investment must work for you. Um, On that tone as well, it's balance, right? Mm -hmm. We balance a lot of things. So when we think about the right time, we think about, well, interest rates, right? Mm -hmm. That is something that automatically comes to mind. Mm -hmm. So as a buyer, I would say if you're pursuing, one of the first things that you should do is probably or definitely have a conversation with your banker, Mm -hmm. right? You need to know what you're qualified for, you know, how much they can lend you, Mm -hmm. what those numbers will be. Right. You now need, I would even recommend you even take those numbers and you have another conversation because that this now has to work work for your plate, right? This is another plate being added to your table. Right. So it's really just the balance of it. And like you say, it's more it's not so much of is it the right time to buy? Because like you said, buying is a big investment. Mm-hmm. Once in a lifetime for some people. Yes. So reworded like that. Mm-hmm. Is it the right time to make a once in a lifetime investment? Right. And that there kind of, you know, lets you know what direction you should go in. Right. One of the things I really like what you said is that um, making an investment in real estate is not a one-time conversation. Correct. And um, I think that's important to know because sometimes people feel that um, they may be rushed when they approach a real estate agent about um, finding a property. And we totally understand that like we said, it's a big investment. So this is a conversation that they may be having with us, but they also need to have with their financial advisors Correct. to be able to ascertain that this is the best investment opportunity for them. Right? I definitely agree. Even, so to speak, if you, let's say you're a cash buyer with funds ready to go right now, right? You're not going to buy tomorrow. It's not going to close tomorrow. You know, there's still there's still that conditional stage even, right? Right. Where even those conversations are still being had and even ramped up more intense. So uh, I definitely think knowing that you, even though it's a competitive market Mm -hmm. and inventory is low, um, you're not, you should not be rushed into that once in a lifetime 
investment or decision. Right. I like you brought up the point about um, the market, mm-hmm. and actually, one of the questions I did want to ask you was actually like you know how um, just talking about the market because. It's very important. Whenever you think real estate, you think the market right away. Correct. And people want to know what's happening on the market because this is a very big factor that's going to contribute to the decision of is it the right time to buy, Correct. right? And so what would you say? How is the current market and what do you think, um, what is the impact of timing in regards to a purchase on based on what's happening in the market today in the Turks and Caicos Islands? For sure. The market to me is very reminiscent of the ocean, Mm -hmm. right? The market right now is the ocean on a calm day. (laughs) And not just a calm day, but a calm day after a storm, Mm -hmm. which is what post-pandemic 2020, 21, 22, 23 felt like. Right. Um, and with our ever-present challenge of lack of inventory, right? after all this busy and active and movement, the, it's going to sizzle off. It's going to slow some. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that is what we're experiencing now. Mm-hmm. However, the attention and the eyes are more. It's like it's, it's, it's doubled. It's, it's right. tripled. Um, we have so much serious buyers we have so much interested buyers Mm -hmm. you know there's (laughs) yes it's definitely a difference but everyone wants in right based on um if they can afford or if it's the right time for them or not right so i feel like this um the show today is definitely um timely Timely. definitely timely yeah i mean uh, Uh, I like how you talked about everybody wanting in in the market and it taps back into us talking about because everybody wants in, this has created a void in the market where there is a lack of inventory in certain price points. So something like that, I think, um, has impacted our market and something like that can lead you to trying to decide if it is the right time to buy or not. Because for me, if I realize there is low inventory, and I find that there is a property that becomes available within my price point. I may have to make the, con- the conscious decision to say, perhaps this is the time I need to buy. Correct. Because when am I going to find this price point again? Correct. So there are factors like that, I think, that will determine for you as an individual Correct. if it's the right time to buy. Correct. So it may not be the right time for someone else because their price point, we have sufficient inventory in it. Correct. But for someone who is in a price point where the inventory is limited, Correct. it may be the right time. And a perfect example of this is, especially I think when it comes to vacant lots currently, um, you you really can't find anything that's under 100000 just as an example. Correct. That's another very um, popular question too. Yeah. And so if, if, if you find something that comes up in less than a hundred thousand, yeah, then I would say to somebody, it's the right time to buy correct, because correct. we don't know when we'll be able to see that again. Correct. Correct. Um, what also affects that, which we would even, um, part two to that scenario mm-hmm. is it's the right time to buy. It's the right price point. Correct. Um, but now there's a lineup, right? Mm-hmm. Because everyone's waiting, everyone's watching. Yeah. Um, so definitely those hot markets, I think um, more than you knowing when is the right time to buy, you should always be preparing. Yes. So you should treat every day like it's the right time to buy. Yeah. Um, that way you are, you know, you're fully capable. Correct. Fully but- Sorry. Correct. No, no, you're true. You're correct. Because I started to say you started off when we were talking about um, this episode, you started off talking about preparation. Correct. Because preparation yes. is key. If you are prepared, then when these opportunities arise, you will be able to capitalize on it. Correct. Definitely. Correct. Yeah. Um, another thing I want to say probably about the market, because we, again, we're talking about the right time to buy is it or is it not. And, and in this question, I'm asking about what's the market doing? I always, for me as a realtor, I like to talk to people, first of all, about the overall general market in the Turks and Caicos. And then sometimes I want to break it down and more get localized into the various islands. Correct. Because I feel that even though there's a general consensus of how things are going in Turks and Caicos, and I feel that the market at its is at its all time and all time high, Correct. and there is a lot of um, developer confidence, and you can see that because of all 
the new construction, not construction. just construction, the mm-hmm. new construction yeah. that is happening. It shows you that there is still that confidence that investors and developers have in that island. It gives you an idea of how this country is growing so fast Correct. and the market is still very strong. Correct. But I like to sometimes break it down into segments because even though overall everything is good, a buyer or seller may be like, okay, well, what's happening? You want to know what's happening in Grantor? Or what's happening in North Caicos? Or what's happening in South Caicos? Sure. And if I'm sending someone to um, say to Grand Turk as a reference, properties may not be moving as quickly as the properties that are moving in Providenciales because there are other factors that may affect the local market and Grand Turk. So I'm saying that because sometimes we, we want to talk about what's happening with the market when we speak about is it the right time to buy? But sometimes we need to break it down depending on what the customer is looking for, for sure. to be able to give them a better or, or fine tune the question, the market question towards them instead of just saying it's a great market. Yeah, for sure. You for know? Sure. Um, <clears throat> I agree with that. Mm-hmm. And definitely with um, North and Middle as well, mm-hmm. which I was just over in North Vegas today. And that trip with that customer was triggered because of the recent news. Mm-hmm. And that is with Bambara Beach being named, you know, second mm-hmm. best beach in the Caribbean, the update coming to the airport there in North Caicos. Right. Those are, like we say, the surrounding factors that contribute to, okay, it's the right time to buy. Correct. Um, it's, like, it's like, you know, the customer told me, mm-hmm. I'm not going to wait until the airport is complete. Correct. So, someone else may, but, but he's not. He's ready. So, so definitely, it's the right time it's for, the right him, time to for him to buy. Exactly. So that is very that um, confirms those contributing factors: the infrastructure, um, surrounding developments, um, ports of entry. Right. Mm-hmm. I feel like as Belfield Landing ramps up, mm-hmm. the development, the sales, the listings, the inventory. Um, I just listed thirty acres in North Caicos. Right. And. Um, of course, the hits are oh well, that's Belfield Landing. Mm-hmm. That's where you. That's where you get to North. Mm-hmm. That's currently the only way you get to North. Correct. Um, this is Sandy <laughs> Point. That's Three Marys. So those are definitely the contributing factors, which you know, definitely let that light bulb go off. Go like, off. It's right. Time. It's so time. so guys, so someone may say, is it the right time to buy? But which island is it the right time Correct. to buy in? Correct. So then Correct. that's a sub question of understanding the market and like your customer is saying, hey, it's the right time to buy a North Caicos because I'm not waiting till all these come come in place. I'm already seeing, I'm already hearing about what's coming and I want to get into the market before it comes because Correct. that when it comes, the prices are going to increase. Correct. And it's only going to follow the same pattern like what in Providenciales is right now. Correct. So most of the prices are at an all-time high in Providenciales. So even though you have great opportunities, um, the outer islands may, may seem even a better opportunity to Correct. be the right time to buy because it's not as developed and now and, and it's heading in that direction. Correct. Entry level. Uh, mm-hmm. I definitely, I definitely <laughs> agree with that. Even if we think about it's, the, it's not the right time to buy in Provo <laughs> with that price point, um, that's where we come in as agents, right? Yeah. We not we don't just sell Provo. Exactly. So we can now shift a, shift the conversation. Well, your price point for two bedroom condos, mm-hmm. six hundred to eight hundred thousand, six hundred to a million. Um, well, if we shift that and we think about maybe it's the right time to buy a north and middle, that may fit the inventory of vacant land beachfront. Correct. And if we think about the um, no timetable to build. Right. Right. You buy your vacant land, you have your land register um, backed by the torrent system. That now, you know, you as a realtor, you just sold that right. that idea of, okay, that's the inception of it, that this is now the right time to buy, not just Provo, but right. possibly getting into this market two to three years to the appreciation development. It now shifts you over to yeah. where you wanted to go uh, initially, which is Provo, you kind of got a shortcut or a segue into that. Into it, exactly. You know, I mean, I think, you know, it's just, it's just you know, talking real estate and, and thinking about all the dynamics of it and, you know, about buying and selling, 
like you say, you have to be creative. Yes. yes. And you have to be able to think out of the box. So you won't be just stumped in one place thinking, I don't want this product. And then you're, you're, you are leaving behind a product that is ripe and ready for you to Correct. invest in Correct. when you could have invested in these because it's the right time to buy. Correct. Instead of if you're holding yourself in a, in a stationary pattern in a place you're looking where it's not the right time to buy and you miss out on the right time to buy somewhere else. I, I hope I'm clear as to what I'm oh, saying. You are 100% clear because <laughs> it, ring, it, it, it reminds me of you know some of my tactics that I use when I sell. But um, one is that people don't buy because of logic, right? Mm-hmm. They, buy be- they buy because of emotion. Mm-hmm. And that is that logic, right? Mm-hmm. The logic is, hey, outer island, entry level, big room for for appreciation right. but the emotion is i like provo yeah i like grace bay i like you know the shopping areas and so right. forth the hour hour and a half flight direct from my city coming down so of course that is where you know sometimes i've seen buyers make the decision and they even say it well you know i don't want this property yeah but i'm going to buy it because it's a good investment yes so that's true one of the things you spoke about earlier, touch point, you touched base on earlier was talking about interest rates. Correct. So what would you say, just, just getting back to that whole point of interest rate, and I know this is, a, this is a subject that I've spoken about on one of my previous shows. We touched on it just a little bit, but I don't feel like it hurts to talk about interest rates even more and more because the more you talk about something, the more you understand it, the more you get creative about how to work around it. Correct. But in, in this particular um, subject of today about the right time to buy, how do you think or how do you see that um, interest rates or do you think it affects someone's decision or should they allow it to affect their decision to decide if it is the right time to buy? What would right. you say to that? So it does affect someone's decision. Um, I do think that, again, it goes back to your table, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's another plate that you're adding on. Mm-hmm. And if we're thinking of home buying, you know, we think of families. I've had buyers that have told me, well, this is the right time for me. Mm-hmm. I have, you know, funds in place and so forth. However, the kids need to go to college. Right. And that is something where interest rates, you know, mm-hmm. it's higher than it was. Yes. The increase that definitely have, they have to think about that. Mm-hmm. Um, as well as if it's a second home as well, right? You already have a existing interest right and now it's a second home that you're looking at that interest rate could very well be the deciding factor the only deciding factor right seeing that you already hold the mortgage and and uh, so forth correct i think that's a very good point and um you know like i've said i've said before i mean i have said it today but i've said it before if you um Whenever interest rates go up, obviously now you have a little bit more conscious buyers because these rates are fact. And especially if you dep- uh, if you don't have a locked in with a fixed rate, of course, and you have a fluctuating rate based on what's happening on the market, sometimes it can be very um, it can be very stressful on your monthly payments. Correct. Um, I've seen interest rates going up to, okay, I don't even want to call that number. <laughs> I don't want to scare anyone to call that number. But I've seen each interest rates increase. increase. Yeah. And at that time, like I said before, I've, I've actually gone through the process and I have actually not a fixed rate and I've seen my own interest rates going up. And for me, it's like, it was a, comp- it was a very, stretch in terms of a difference in the monthly payment in which I needed to pay. Of course. And I think something like that really um, will affect a customer in determining if it's the right time for them to buy because they may not be able, even though they may qualify for the amount that is being loaned, they may not be able to maintain that monthly payment because you don't want to be delinquent after you do so. And one thing I also like to say to people when thinking about Purchasing a mortgage, for example, is uh, we, most times we talk about land, but remember this also applies to homes and condos. And if you have a condo and you're paying monthly strata fee, so now you're not just thinking about your strata fee, but you're also thinking about your monthly mortgage payment. Correct. And at the time of calculating that price, you may have 
um, just calculated just as an example and approximately say your, your, your condo fee per month is $700. Mm-hmm. You may have calculated based on your mortgage that you are borrowing. You may have said that my mortgage fee per month is only $2,000. But now when these interest rates increase, this may uh, take that monthly payment out of the ballpark of which you are able to spend on a monthly basis. Of course. And even though you may say that, okay, condos generate money. But you have to remember, and this is something I've had a conversation with one of the managers at one of the resorts about, sometimes people fail to realize that your monthly payment may be, for example, the first of the month. But that doesn't mean it's the same schedule that the resort has when it comes to paying you your um, whatever in terms of revenue that you have per month. And so it doesn't coincide with each other. So you have to be able to prepare yourself to be able to pay those fees for your mortgage um, without waiting um, completely on the earnings that you're getting from your condos. I mean, mean, it, it may sound it may sound like it's a straightforward thing to know, but sometimes we don't think about it Correct. because we just think about, hey, my condo is making money. Yeah, you didn't think of the schedule. You of, didn't think of the schedule of Correct. what's going on. Correct. You know? Yeah, no, I definitely agree. Um, on the tone of that as well, um, with the interest rates, um, I'm also thinking of, um, I'm sorry, it just left me. Uh-huh. We, we um, spoke of the condos. Well, I'm thinking of the, re- of the reverse, right? You have your monthly stratus and your interest rate is rising, well, what if that development now says, well, special assessments are coming mm-hmm. or, you know, the strata increases. Mm-hmm. So now you're dealing with both, which initially it probably was not a thought on your on your mind. Mm-hmm. So I would say that the interest rates are they are It's very important and it's mm-hmm. definitely affecting the everyday buyer. It is affecting the everyday buyer. So, yeah. You know, it is affecting the everyday buyer. But on the other hand, I want to say this. And now I'm not contradicting what I said because mm-hmm. I solely believe that these are things you have to be prepared for. Mm-hmm. And these are things you have to take um, deep consideration on, which is going to dictate to you if it is the right time for you to buy or not. But sometimes I say you have to also think out of the box as well because, again, back to this low inventory when there isn't something in your price range and something becomes available, are you going to allow the interest rates to hold you down? Correct. And remember, sometimes interest rates are not always permanently high. They also will decrease Correct. eventually. Correct. So, and at that time, I would say, make sure I ask them to fix that rate. Yeah, of course. But I mean, the, you, I, I'm saying that to say it does affect, like you said, the average buyer. And I'm, and I was hope, and I'm hoping that interest rate can never be so high because it all affects us. But at the same time, I would say to anyone who is dependent on a mortgage um, to prepare themselves for the worst when they are going into a mortgage so that they will be able to um, combat any changes in interest rates or anything. I know sometimes it's unpredictable, Correct. but also don't let that be the full factor that stops you Correct. from moving forward because then you don't want to still miss out on the product Correct. just because of the interest rate. Correct. Uh, I definitely agree with that. I think we often talk of resort lifestyle, mm-hmm. but I think we should talk of ownership lifestyle mm-hmm. because that also plays a factor in if it's the right time to buy. Mm-hmm. You have to look at yourself and ask yourself, are you ready to own real estate? Mm-hmm. And you know, that, that it comes, that comes with the lifestyle that comes with decisions mm-hmm. that comes with sacrifices. Um, and, and, and that is, mm-hmm. to me, that is what combats the interest rate. Right. You. Are you willing to adapt your lifestyle to make sure that you meet these requirements, to make sure that the interest rate doesn't affect when you just waited mm-hmm. so long, <laughs> 20, 20 showings, yeah. hot sun, um, uh, out in the bush, mm-hmm. waiting for that one piece of, vacant land in the area that you really want really want are you going to let now mm-hmm. the fact that you can cut back you can sacrifice you can't move some things around you can't be flexible to make it happen no i think that that's the main thing to come back the interest rates for sure yeah i think sometimes we need to be intentional intentional and actually um 
change some of our lifestyle habits, like you said, Correct. to make things work. Sometimes we're so comfortable in our skin and our what we're accustomed to, but we don't want to make any sacrifices and cut back. Correct. And like I know you're not saying this, and I'm not saying this, and we're not telling anyone how to live their life. Of course, and not. of course, you gotta live life to the fullest, because <laughs> you know I'm gonna do it. But at the same time, I think that when you really want to be a part of the development that's happening on island, mm -hmm. and you want to have, when you want to um, be a part of the investment that's happening, sometimes you have to scale back and try to see what it, what prioritize certain things in order to achieve what you need to do for sure and you know some some people you know it's a pride thing it's an ego so even when i'm selling right i might not even say scale back right. i might say you no know, let's focus mm -hmm. you know let's lock into the goal yeah um and you know i definitely i'm not one as well to, to tell someone what to do but you know i'm comfortable with you know especially buyers that i've grown up with and people that i know and, you know, I'll, you know, speak to one of my local friends and they say, well, mm -hmm. no, I'm at this place or I'm at that place. And this is someone who recently bought a home and I'm at this place. I'm at that place. And, you know, I'll even tell them, like, you know, well, you bought a home to mm -hmm. be at that place every yeah. day, all day. Um, the comfort of home, um, the convenience of it. Um, I think that alone, you know, sets you sets you straight. I always say you mm -hmm. can't make right decisions if you're not having a good night's sleep and sleeping in your own house, your own property, you know, those yeah. are some of the things that, that motivates you and encourages you along the way. So, exactly. So one of the things I love to talk about on this show, mm -hmm. just talking about the initiatives that are out there that currently we know that the government is running a number of programs. Do you feel that these programs are true are a very good incentive to assist somebody in determining if it's the right time for them to buy of course you of think course. that it is Go yes ahead. um and i can see it on both ways right i'm thinking of um the program where they're actually converting the free uh, leasehold to freehold they're um, 50 percent of the arrears um for a seller who may be in that situation where they're trying to convert their property and with the market right now, you know, in Provo being somewhat, mm -hmm. it's a seller's market, this may be the right time for them to, or it may be um, um, important right now mm -hmm. for them to capitalize. You know, they have the government uh, program that's in place, a market that's friendly for them, that's the right time to sell, we can say. Um, as well as I'm thinking, if we're thinking interest rates, let's say if we're going into a purchase and we're looking at numbers and we're saying for the next two to four years, based on interest rates and their expectancy, we'll pay, let's just throw a number out there, we'll pay 15 to 18,000 more in interest. Well, the government also has the program running with the stamp duty reduction. That may be the offset number. Mm -hmm. So that may be a perfect break even right. to where interest rates doesn't even matter because of the program with the reduced with the reduced stem duty right it it's it, it still evens everything out for you right well i mean yeah that's a program that has been running a while um i think a year or two years now about the 50 percent reduction in stem duty or the sorry fifty thousand dollars you used the word 50, so I'm thinking yeah, about two 50, different yeah. programs because the there arrears. are actually there are actually several programs. Correct. But the, using the word 50, I know that there's a 50% off in one program. And then there's actually a program where you get a $50,000 towards your STEM duty mm -hmm. or towards the construction um, the construction pro, pro, pro process where you can bring in materials and of also course. capitalize yes. on that. Yes. So, yeah, I do think that um, a lot of these programs, like you say, is it helps to offset something like that. Yeah, interest where rates, the interest sure. rates will help to offset other um, other fees that may be incurred. But, you know, I can't say it enough. While this program is running, if you can take advantage of it. You should. you should, because sometimes the stamp duty is the biggest, bulk, the the bulkiest item. Yes, and in helping a homeowner 
to um, get, over that hump. get over the hump and to be able to achieve that real estate goal. For sure. STEM duty for, and I'm happy that this program has run as long as it has run. Correct. And, and, and I'd like to mention on the show because sometimes there are still people who don't realize it's still going on. Correct. So if you can tap into that now, remember whenever you get into the STEM duty, thing remember that the government may have some disclaimers on it you have to make sure to check into that of course i'm not going to talk about those on the show for sure. but the initiative itself is a real great one for sure and i feel that there's another initiative i've spoke about before where because of the lack of a certain type of um rentals and villas the government has an initiative <laughs> for duty exemption for anyone who's bought building five or more units and so I feel like that will intrigue someone of course saying that this is a great time to buy correct and to build and to build correct it's you worth know what it. I mean it is worth it because when are you going to get these initiatives again and correct. it is a very big savings and especially say if you are someone who wanted to always have an apartment complex to assist true. you with income for your family you know to be an, a landlord this is an opportunity so if you allow this these these exemptions to to um, pass you by, then you're missing out on a big opportunity to invest in Turks and Caicos. Of course, and as well, if you also think of, <clears throat> as you also hinted at, with in the future, you know, m- the reduction or you know interest mm-hmm. rates somewhat coming down, you know, um, you may look back and say, well, wow, with mm-hmm. this drop in interest rates, you know, mm-hmm. I'm happy that I capitalized because maybe now the government is not running this right. exemption now so it all it all it all ties, ties in. in i'm just going to take a quick minute just to remind the listening audience that li- that i'm here and i'm sitting with mr tora jackson of course and i'm going to refer to him of course the ambassador of the trucks and Kings real estate association yeah he's sitting in his capacity today but he's sitting also with the hat of a real estate agent as we discuss if it is the right time to buy Remember to please put in where you're listening in from. And definitely, if you have a question or if you have a comment, feel free to add it to it. Your contribution is very valuable. And this show is not just about us talking, but it's interacting with you and giving you the information that you can use it to help in your decision making as make, make your decision making as you invest in real estate in Tricks and Caicos. We don't want you to be left behind. Take this as an opportunity to help you to further your real estate goals. All right. So again, if you have questions or comments, leave it in the section. We'll be sure to answer it. Or even after the live broadcast, we'll go over the show and try to get those questions answered for you. All right. So we've talked about a number of things um, today and we're, we're getting ready to wind it down a little bit. But I have one or two, two but say about two more Three more questions for him. I'm like, three more questions for you. Um, what factors would you, um, what other factors would you, um, would you decide or to say to someone if it is the right time to buy? Like, I know we've talked about a lot of things. We've talked about the interest rates. You know, we've talked about government um, um, opportunities. What other factors would you think a person should be thinking about when deciding if it is the right time to buy? Um, and you can start or I can start. You tell me. Yeah. I think the main factor, I think the main factor is inventory. Okay. I think um, because we're so small, mm-hmm. inventory is our biggest problem, right? Mm-hmm. We don't have enough vacant land. Mm-hmm. We don't have enough. We don't have enough people. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so I think inventory, when you think about, especially in the outer islands, right, it's even worse. Mm-hmm. The inventory is really lacking. So with each sale in between the last sale and a new listing, I mean, we're seeing appreciation in certain areas, 25, 30 percent, some even 50 percent. Mm-hmm. So I think inventory is probably the the um, the most significant factor. I believe because you're not going to, you're not going to inventory is basically, um, if I were to break down inventory, it is basically, um, your chance, right? That is your, that is your, I don't want to say your one shot, but you don't know when you're going to see this Bambara beachfront listing again. You don't know when you're going to see this studio condo at Alexandra all inclusive again. 
Um, and the reason why I mentioned those two things are because those are two of my last sales in the past year that I am really proud of. Right. Um, I have the, the um, my clients at the Alexandra, you know, they message all the time. They say, you know, we are in the black, we're loving it. They travel all the time and utilize it. Um, so that really checks off all boxes, right? Um, yes. Income, personal use, and of course, inventory means appreciation. Right. We, we, we haven't seen a studio condo with views of the water in that price point since. Mm-hmm. Actually, if we think about it, there are developments not on the water, mm-hmm. even though they have their own brand and allure and attraction, but we're seeing developments that are not beachfront studios, roughly same square feet mm-hmm. that are, you know, price more than mm-hmm. what they purchased. So right. um, even if I would go back to Bambara, when we made that purchase, um, about two, two to three weeks later, mm-hmm. Bambara Beach, second best beach in the Caribbean. Yeah. So again, inventory. We haven't seen any beachfront, true beachfront on, on that Bambara since. I would assume since it's not just mm-hmm. Bambara Beach now, and second best beach in the Caribbean, yes. I would assume that the new inventory, it will, ref- it will reflect that in price. Correct. So that buyer there, it signified that it was the right time to buy when we did. Based on the inventory, I think that's a very good point. Correct. You know, what I would say in regarding to something else that affects a person's decision if it's the right time to buy. Now I'm getting a little bit more personal of from course. my side. Of course. It's, it's really your personal preference. And if, for you, what is the need or what if it's a want? And I say that because you may be in a situation where you are renting and you have a family of rather three, four or five. You know, we um, in Turks and Caicos, a lot of us have extended families or bigger families. And it's just at this time, it is just uh, where you're paying a high rent rental rate and you are still not sheltered in a comfortable environment so you're you're right now it's just not a want but actually it's a need for you as an individual to be able to find a family home for you and your family to occupy and i think that's uh, one of for me one of the key things i always say to persons is examine yourself think about this is this a want or is this a need? Correct. And I think this is going to help you decide if it's the right time for you to buy. Because if it's a need, then perhaps this is your season and this is the time for you to buy. Now, you may not find the ideal product right away, but at least you know, okay, I need to start the journey and the process towards achieving this need because this is something that is necessary. Correct. Right? I think that um, I always try to take it from that perspective first, and then I start thinking of other reasons. You know, um, um, another thing I normally would say to persons to determine if it's the right time um, for them to buy, I would try to find out from them, okay, are you looking at this from an investment standpoint or are you looking at this as a lifestyle standpoint? So if it's a lifestyle standpoint, then we know that it may not be the right time for you to buy because this doesn't fit your lifestyle. Correct. But if it's an investment, okay, now we're going to start drawing in on, okay, what makes this a good investment and why is this a really good time to buy? I think you need to be able to determine if that's a lifestyle or as an investment. Correct. And then the third thing I normally think about is um, back to where we were talking about initiative from the government, but not just that. Think about the economy in which you're investing in. And of course, we're talking about the Turks and Caicos. Overall, think about is there something that's lacking, again, from an investment standpoint in the Turks and Caicos that's much needed that I will be able to invest and my investment can grow and be able to um, flourish? And as I think about the Turks and Caicos, and if the question was asked to me from, uh, from a real estate standpoint, what it is that is there a need in the country for certain things? I think it's very obvious that housing is a need. Yeah, it is. It Affordable is. housing rental property and not just short-term rentals because we have that in abundance but all, even though it's still a lucrative market yes. but also the long-term rental opportunities is still a need yes. and so from an investor on the outside looking in 
I would be able to say, when I say investor, an investor does not have to be a big developer spending millions of dollars. You are an investor. Once you purchase real estate and you are an investor. So when I use that word, even though we think big conglomerates, Mm -hmm. I'm thinking as an individual, if it's about an investment Mm -hmm. and you see the need of the country, I feel that this is a good time for you to buy. Again, backing on long-term rentals. Right now, the rental rates are so high because of the shortage of rentals. Correct. So we know that there is a need for it. Correct. Currently, there aren't many affordable homes in a certain price point. When I say price point, it's very difficult finding anything within up to 400000 or 500000 You know, So for sure, you're not going to find anything at 150000 and there is a need. Yeah. So for me, looking in it to figure out if it's the right time to buy and, and real estate, uh, you know, real estate mean land and build. I would think for some people it is the right time to buy because there is a void in the market. Yes. There is a void and the economy is right for it. And I feel like these are additional factors that one can consider. You know, I know it's all about how far your pocket can reach sometime, but the question is, is it the right time to buy? So there's no one answer to it. Correct. It's so many <clears throat> various um, situations based on the individual and what the need is and what they're looking for. Correct. Correct. I definitely agree with that. Also, where you also touched on with the long-term housing, I think Turks and Caicos has that um, image of Airbnbs and rentals and mm-hmm. beach and so forth. And from an investor standpoint, if you're worried about, if you're thinking of ROI, return on investment, um, tapping into the long-term market, that is definitely lucrative. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a property that I sh- that I showed recently. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a home that's already on it, mm-hmm. and they're getting rent. Right. The rent that they're getting, I believe, is about two five, two eight, somewhere between there, twenty five hundred, twenty eight hundred bucks per month. Now that property is zoned for about fourteen bedrooms. Mm-hmm. So immediately, my buyer that I'm with, we switch from thinking short term Airbnbs, housekeeping, maintenance, having all these things ready to have that image, and also to compete in such a um, competitive market of as right. Um, Airbnbs, right? Everyone's trying to do add-ons, amenities, something to make their property different. Um, you now think about long-term housing. Okay, well, I can keep that tenant in there at twenty-five hundred, <laughs> and we have four. We have another, you know, twelve bedrooms, but I can do construction for something just like that, mm-hmm. and eventually I could fill this entire property out, and you know, this mm-hmm. is your estate, right? Yeah, I, I, I mean, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Hmm. So we're again winding down. I said this before, but mm-hmm. truthfully, this is the last two questions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sure. um, can you provide examples of recent successful transactions that has that highlight the importance of timing in the real estate market? I think timing is very crucial mm-hmm. with the real estate market. Timing is important in buying um um, what would you say? Would you be able to provide an example um, of something that you have gone through? Because I just want to be able to share something on an experience level. You know, sometimes when you're talking about things, people will be like, well, you're just talking based on what you don't know. Mm-hmm. So you want to be able to speak to, to, to others about something that you have experienced. Correct. Would you be able to give an example of where timing matters in a real estate transaction and capitalizing in the market. Of course. Um, and to even add on that, some people may say, well, you know, it's not your money. It's not, it's not your money that's spending to buy this, you know? So mm-hmm. having those personal experiences, whether it's a sale that you've closed mm-hmm. or even something that you've experienced, it does carry weight when right. you're trying to sell that, sell that um, idea. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think of uh, a transaction that, I was a part of in 2021, um, and that was a home in um, the Cuba Jack Discovery Bay area, Uh, Canal Front Home, 0.69 of an acre, Mm -hmm. and that was 2021. The price that that home closed on, and of course, we thought of everything. We thought of interest rates. We thought of um, safety. We thought of accessibility, um, but we pulled the trigger. Right, we didn't let those things stop us. Um, fast forward today, vacant land 0.69, 
is going roughly the same price for what the home right. was bought for. That home as well had a gas house on it. Um, you were able to um, you know, utilize, use it as an income property. Mm -hmm. And like I said, the, the, um, a good night's sleep. Being able to make decisions, being able to you know go throughout your day with a good night's sleep, with you know a comfortable roof over your head, yes. that um that is definitely important. It is important, definitely. And um, like you say, the values of prices are just increasing. Um, again, we have a very lucrative market in the Turks and Caicos Islands, and again, short-term rental is a lucrative. Um, aspect of the market in the Church and Kicker Sounds, a lot of people are tapping into it. And at one point, I thought it was just go, um, just just overboard. But obviously, it hasn't like tapped itself out, Correct. and it's still um, it's still the way to go in terms of one of the ways to go in dealing with short term rentals. And it just reminds me also because of the Long Bay area. I think that Long Bay area is a really prime and a very good example of how timing really matters as well wow. because long bay has given each buyer um an opportunity to tap into a lot of things that the market offers or that you can do with the real estate product in the Turks and caicos for example most of the lots in long bay were actually one acre so that was one of the only places you could find one acre lot so because of that so that was one thing and also long bay has beach area so of course now we're thinking short-term rentals and the market has grown so um quickly in the long bay area so now you have a mixed use of residential homes short-term vacation rentals um, even when you have small condo resort development Correct. type projects. So it has grown. And the fact that you are able to subdivide these lots has given people real estate power because now you have a one acre lot and subdivide and you can sell individual lots. You can build on individual and develop it. And I've seen where I remember probably um, uh, one year, these lots in Long Bay, one acre lots were around thirty-five thousand. Mm, wow. Probably within the next, <laughs> within the next um, three months, those same lots became thirty-five thousand. Did you see the jump? Mm. Probably then, within the next another five months, those same lots were like a hundred thousand. Mm, yeah. And as I look to see how the prices were changing, it wasn't waiting for a year to change. Um, the percentage in price sure. and at this time right now so where we would have started for a vacant lot one acre at 35,000 now you're selling probably 0.25 a quarter of an acre and you're already at 150,000 correct so it shows you where the prices of land has evolved all in the Turks and Caicos but I think that Long Bay is a prime example to show the appreciation of values of property and if you don't take advantage of the timing and I think like I said when I started Long Bay was right for it because it 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 um it tapped into all of the things that some of the things that the market of the Turks and Caicos offered Correct. the subdivision of yes, land yes. the rental properties it for long term boxes. it checked all boxes the short term yeah. rental opportunities yeah. the beachfront living Correct. the lifestyle living and so i think it has really explored and i think long has also helped to make a big change in the trips of and Caicos islands it's been because of that because yeah. sometimes people will come to you and compare well long bay is selling for this even <laughs> yeah. though they're in another area yeah. but it just shows you that um the timing it's just the market was right and timing does make a difference when thinking about if it is the right time to buy and that's something you should think about when you're looking in a specific area you should think about how has that era evolved over the years, mm -hmm. not just what sold last week, but ask your realtor to give you some comps to show you how it has evolved. And if you see that the, the, the value of price is increasing significantly, then you know that even if this property is worth, I'm just using a number, 150000 mm -hmm. it's a good time still to buy because that land has opportunity for appreciation because the overall era has continued to appreciate time after time, year over year. Of course, of course. Um, I can even go back to another example of the right time to buy. Since you mentioned Long Bay, um, I believe my first sale was <laughs> Flamingo. <first> <laughs> my first sale was uh, Flamingo Road, and as I think about that, um, the number that we got a full acre on Flamingo Road, mm -hmm. now we're seeing 
a quarter acre subdivided at that very same number. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure, you know, that that buyer, he definitely knew it was the right time to buy from then. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Of course. Before we wrap it up, I'm going to ask you if you have any parting words, anything you would like to say to the audience that we did not talk about or anything you would want to say to anyone who is considering um, taking that real estate plunge. Um, this is your opportunity to do so. For sure. So I would say um, if you're definitely, if you're thinking of real estate in Turks and Caicos, um, call me, <laughs> give me a call for sure. Um, secondly, I would say if we were to just to go back up the thought of not just am I buying real estate or is it the right time to buy, but is it the right time for me to make this once in a lifetime investment mm -hmm. or this rare opportunity? Mm -hmm. And that, that, that kind of, you know, puts your ducks in a row mm -hmm. because it is a lifestyle. Like we say of the resort lifestyle. Think about it as the ownership lifestyle. You are now an owner and you own a piece of the earth. You own real estate. And, you know, we spoke of the sacrifices. So I would say think about the sacrifices that need to be made. Think about the, um, think about the potential. Don't let the setbacks of interest rates um, throw off what the potential can be. Throw off what your dream is. Mm -hmm. So I would say um, definitely give me a call. And we could definitely discuss that. <laughs> Thanks so much, Tara. It was really good having a conversation with you. You always have this bubbly attitude. It's contagious. Definitely. Uh, it's always a pleasure. But thank you so much for being a part of the show. And definitely, I would say to the listening audience, it's always a pleasure to be in your home and most of all for you to be in our studio on a Thursday and definitely we always look forward to your comments and your contribution and if there's ever a topic that you would like for us to share on the show please feel free to let us know because this show is about educating us all about the real estate process every time I come on these shows I learn more I'm able to feed off of other persons of and be able to serve you better as a real estate agent but most of all to be able to help you in your decision making I want you to be a part of the development of the Turks and Caicos Islands and I feel like one of the best ways to be a part of this development is through investment in real estate Correct. you know there are numerous real estate agents there's a real estate association you can choose from of course today you're choosing with Tara okay. but I'm just saying it generally I'm just letting you know the show is not just about who comes on the show. The show is about you and getting you the information that you need so that you can be a part of the development of these Turks and Caicos Islands. And with that said, I would say to you, as always, stay safe and remain blessed. Have a great evening. The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed on this show belong solely to Let's Talk TCI Real Estate and not that of Keller Williams TCI or any of its affiliates. Any action you take upon the information provided on this show is strictly at your own risk. And Let's Talk TCI real estate guest or host will not be liable for any losses and damages in connection with the use of the material. I am not an investment advisor, broker, or dealer.